What I've got here is a zinc. This is basically uh, an M12. Oh, I can't pull it pull it apart. But this is a half inch M12 zinc washer. Now, what I've done is between that, I've taken some ordinary kitchen towel. I made it. I what you want to do is keep is make sure you do everything the same for each cell. So I folded that four times and that gave me the required thickness. I was going to stick with that thickness for every cell. So in that way you're you're going to soak up the same amount of um, salt water. And then when I'd basically when I made my I just just as an example, when I'd made a typical cell, let's just say it's that one. That's not. So like you'd have made one of these Obviously, I'd have cut that with a pair of scissors so it exactly matches the um, the zinc uh, washer. And then you just take that and you get a, you you fill up a well you don't fill up you just put in a small amount of water into a bowl, put enough salt in that so that when you when you pour the salt in, you you see that the granules are no longer dissolving. Then you know you've got enough salt in there. Uh, that's the maximum salt you can get in the water. So then you just drop your and you let that soak in. Then when that soaks in, all you do is you put it, you get your your two pence piece like that, and you get this. I'm presuming I'd cut that to the right size, which I haven't in this example, but you would have cut it to the right size. And you'd place that on there, and then once that's on there, and that would be all uh, nicely rounded round there, then you just take your uh, one of your um, these are all stuck down now because these are quite old and they've got stuck to each other. But uh, you would take your washer and just put your washer on there. And then basically all you do then is once you put your washer on there, you'd get a, another piece of towel and then just dry everything out. So as an example, let's say that one is one I just freshly done. You dry it out, get all the, get all the access water off it. And there you have it, you've got your cell. That's that's one cell. Now you just do that for as many cells as you want the battery to be. You can measure the voltage on one of these cells and that give you a rough idea of... Because uh, each of these cells are going to be roughly the same sort of voltage and it turns out that these ones here using uh, a tw M12 uh, zinc plated washer and a two pence and a UK two pence piece coin uh, with a, with four layers of um, kitchen towel in between soaked in salt water that comes to roughly 0.67 volts so each of these cells is about 0.67 volts I've made 30 cells here so what I did uh, and you can do it any way you want I, I put six of these together to get me roughly a, uh, roughly about I think it was about four volts so I put six of these together then I just built Five stacks of those, so these are all these are all stacks of 3.5 volts batteries, if you like. Now you could stack them on top of each other and give yourself, you know, quite a higher uh, voltage, say 15 volts. But the problem with st stacking them all in series, what you actually end up doing is increasing the internal resistance. So I found that the for this particular cell, this 0.67 cell made like this. The optimum value I found through a bit of experimenting was just to use six of them uh, and that really was the best you were going to get out of it to get any decent amount of current out of it. Of course if I had many more stacks of these I could get more current so you could actually stack them higher in series but you'd need so many of them to get a high high current and a high voltage you'd want hundreds of them yeah so I decided to just stick with 3.5 volts uh, and then what I did was uh, just use a bit of PCB board, spare bit of PCB board you've got laying about. That there can be your, uh, let me think, that's a uh, positive. So that there can be where you sit them all on top of. So you can sit them on top of that like so. So I put them all up there and then I connected one side to my um, my voltmeter there so I could measure it so I connected one on there and then I used, just connected the other one to here like so and connected that one on there so I used a 12 inch steel rule 
Might be better off using another piece of copper, really, to, to make it more... So the reading's more accurate, possibly. But, yeah, it doesn't really matter. This is just an experiment, really. Let's just see what the, uh, the voltage is. There you go. All right, this is... This battery is getting a bit old now, but uh, that was originally up to <laughs> 3.5. But after a lot of messing around, it's dropped. So that's basically how you build one. Uh, it's as simple as that, yeah? So now I'll just go through and work out the internal resistance of this and compare it to uh, a very simple uh, two of these little batteries, two of these little double A batteries, yeah? So I, that comes to 2.4 volts. So I'm going to compare that to our three volt uh, voltaic pile and see which one wins uh, see which one gives us the most current what I've got here is I've placed them all together so that uh, they're in parallel if you like uh, and I'm gonna that gives us basically a lower impedance value than if we just use one stack on its own so what we're gonna do is measure the uh, the voltage across these uh, these cells and then uh, I'm going to use a decade box to find the internal impedance so let's just find the um, the total voltage and then I'll quickly find the internal impedance because the battery actually runs flat quite quickly so we'll have to do this reasonably fast so I'll just place that on there and now you can see there's three volts so now let's just quickly find the uh, the internal resistance we want to be half the voltage. Well, that's more or less 1.5. So that's yep. So now we've got our total voltage was three volts. And sorry, the total voltage was three volts, and the internal impedance was 1.5 volts at 1,300 1, ohms. So 1,300 ohms is our internal impedance for this five stack. So what I'm going to do now is one stack is still going to be three volts, um, but I want to show you that the internal resistance of a single stack is going to be a lot higher. Let's just take these off, and we're just going to go across this one single cell now and measure it just to, com just to confirm it's still the same. There it's about three. So now let's stick on the... Uh, and find our internal impedance. I'm going to have to adjust the decade box now because it won't be as it is there. Okay, so we're going to have to increase it now because that's not showing. We want to go up to 1.5. Okay, so that's showing. Let's come down. So it's bring that up to okay. So I make that about six thousand uh, at one point five. So we take that off and just check we're still on three volts there. Not quite three volts, but near enough. And that's on about one point five. Okay, so that's what we got on the. Uh, the decade box is 6,000, so for a single stack, the internal resistance is 6,000 ohms. Okay, so uh, what we've got there is 1,300 ohms for the uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 stacks in a row, and internal resistance of 6,000 ohms when we're just looking at a single stack. In fact, if I stacked these up in series and give us higher voltage we'd see the internal resistor increase even more so uh, although this voltaic cell this vol voltaic pile will work as a battery we'll need so many of these because of the high internal resistance to get a decent current we're going to need lots and lots of these uh, for example this is only producing three volts and obviously uh, because of the high internal impedance we're not going to get much current out of that but I think we've got enough just to light up uh, a red LED. So let's just check that that's so that that will do that. We're gonna check this. 
So now we'll just light up a red LED just to confirm that it. There, you can see the LED lighting there. And notice how the. Uh, notice how the voltage drops significantly when we put the LED in. If I take it off, you see it starts to go back up again. Let's just put that back in. Just see where we are. See that we'll see the voltage drop. Notice it's dropped right down, but you can see there we've got enough power there to light a red LED, which is not that impressive, but <laughs> just go show it's working. Um, and there you go, quite a lot of voltage dropped across the internal resistance because the internal resistance is so high. So, obviously. You know, compared to that, it's, it's quite high. So a lot of the voltage being dropped across the internal resistance very, and not much across there. As an example, what we had there was a th we built ourselves a 3-volt um, Voltaic pile. I've got uh, two 1.2-volt AA batteries here. Uh, so they add up to less than 3 volts. They add up to 2, two volts, 2.4 two point, um, 2 volts. So if I... Now, just confirm that. Take these leads off. Just check the voltage across these. Okay, you can see it's 2.5. It's showing 2.5 volts. So uh, it's, these are more powerful than I thought. So uh, that's 2.5 volts. And uh, it's still 0.5 volts less than our voltaic... Um, pile but the internal resistance of these is really really low and you'll see the difference when we put the the LED on this you see it's, it's about twice as bright so although that that is 2.5 volts and our voltaic pile is in fact 3 volts because the internal resistance of this is really really small uh, we got a lot more current flowing through here in fact the internal resistance of this which I checked earlier is about 50 50 ohms. In fact, it's, no, it's about 60 ohms actually. So uh, if we just write that down, 60 ohms, and we know the voltage is 2.5 volts. So we can get, get a rough idea of the current that's flowing through that LED from this, and the current that's flowing through the LED from our uh, vol our penny zinc washer volca uh, voltaic pile, and you'll be able to see that there's a lot more current running through this uh, using the uh, the two AA batteries then which are only two which only comes to 2.5 volts than there is coming out of the 3 volts voltaic power because of this really high internal resistance uh, you know uh, this this has got an internal resistance of about 60 ohms compared to the voltaic pile it's got a resistance of 1300 ohms Packing them in parallel, six six deep though, of course, gave us a lot lesser internal impedance than than a single stack. So, uh, you know, we could actually get a high current if we had enough of these, had hundreds of these, then we could get really high currents. And that and that's of course what they that's what they had to do back in the 1800s when they built these batteries. They needed loads of these because of the massive internal resistance on the the first voltaic piles which were just made from zinc, copper, and salt, 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 uh, salt padding in between as the electrolytes. So um, they, they, they were very inefficient, like this one's very inefficient. It, it was 36 years later when the Daniel cell came along that, that really batteries then started to become like the modern version that they are today, you know. But So this, this state of affairs lasted for a long time. So when they did their experiments, they had to have very, very large battery piles like this uh, hence the the way they call them a pile yeah so that's so that's that i uh, hope hope you found that useful